There you go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to coverage of high school basketball on Manchester Public Television Services. We are in the Charles J. Quinn Gymnasium on the campus of West High School today. Our first visit to West in 2020 for a girls game where the Blue Knights are hosting the Eagles of Kennett. We're seeing the starting lineups right now for Kennett. Include number two, Jalen Cummings, a 5'9 junior. Now let's turn and look at the central, uh, excuse me, the west lineup. This is Michaela Viziris, 5'4 sophomore guard. Number 10 is Ania Poulin, a 5'6 sophomore guard. Number 12 is Nyana Piok, a 5'10 freshman. Number 24 is Abuk Tang, a 5'8 junior. And number 23 is Olivia Culver, a 5'7 sophomore guard. I'll get you the Kennett line up in a moment, but first we'll observe the national anthem being sung live. Well, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? That's Annika, one of the West cheerleaders who abandoned the microphone because it just wasn't working that well and went a cappella. I hope you could hear it at home. That was a very nice version of our national anthem. I'm Peter Capano, and I'm happy to be here tonight on this Friday afternoon, actually, the 17th of January, a cold Friday. Kennett came down early. They brought their boys JV and their boys varsity, and those teams will play following this one. But we're gonna, Gary Walsh will toss up the ball for the two and four West Blue Knights and the six and two Kennett Eagles. Kennett starts number two, Jalen Cummings. She's there in the center circle waiting to jump. Number 14 is Ella Chandler, a 5'7 junior. Number 21 is Sierra Parsons, a 5'8 junior. As the tip goes to Culver, and she drops it in. West with a quick lead here. Number 24 for Kennett is Sydney Chin, a 5'6 freshman guard. And number 30 is Liz Cody, a 5'6 senior guard. And that is Cody putting the first jumper up for Kennett. Rebound comes to Chin, or excuse me, comes to Chandler. Chandler now. Back to Cody up top. West looks like they're in a 2-3 uh, zone or maybe a 2-1-2 two -two zone. That ball is loose and knocked away by Viziris. Away comes Abuk. Tang goes to Culver. And a rebound to Kennett. Chandler to Chin. Back to Chandler. She's looking down low to Cummings. Got some position, but uh, they can't get it to her. Let's swing it back up top. This is Liz Cody. In the corner to Chandler. Rebound to Tang. Oh 
The corner jumper from Viziris won't drop. Ball comes loose. It's grabbed by Poulin. Long jumper from Culver won't drop. She gets back rim. It's a good looking shot. Just a little too strong. West is coached by Jerry Haynes, Kennett by Larry Meter. By Chandler for Cody. Parsons at the elbow. It's well guarded by Poulin. It's a jumper. Ball still loose. Viziris fights for it. Chandler gets it. Referees let him go this time. Happy to see that. Oftentimes you get a very quick whistle on held balls at the girl's side. That time they let him battle a little bit. Chandler came away with it. Culver over for Poulin. Back to Culver for three. Culver must be the designated shooter tonight. I think she's taken all but one of the West attempts at goal. Viziris comes down with the rebound. She'll bring it up. Michaela listed at 5-4. Here's Tang. A jumper from Poulin this time. West turning cold. They got a layup off the opening tip and lead two to nothing three minutes into this one, but can't seem to find the range. On the jumper. His chin. Now to Cody. Good anticipation. Cody does a real good job, though, to get that back as Poulin had knocked it away. Kenneth looks a little confused by this. Now it looks more like a 1 3 1. Chandler in the corner to Chin. That's long. Culver with the rebound. Here comes Culver. Olivia goes left. Tang. Viziris to Culver. To Poulin. Viziris crashes for the rebound. It's going to go off of Chin. It'll be West Ball. Poulin will in inbound. Trying to pick out Tang right underneath. That will be a hell ball. West won the opening tap, so the arrow favors Kennett. Comes our first sub, number 11, Samantha Habert, 5'7", sophomore, for Kennett. <coughs> Her mother is manning the book for the Eagles. Help me with the pronunciations as needed. Chin. Down low to Parsons, kicks it back out. Here's Cody. And Kennett grabs a one point lead. Poulin's got a lot of company, does a good job though to find Olivia. Here's Tang. That'll go. Five three West. The three minute mark here in the first quarter. Habert comes off the rebound to Culvert. So a very good ball movement, last possession for West as they swung it around the perimeter. Tang hit the jumper. As a result, here's Habert with the loose ball. And a knee brace on, looks like that's affecting her just a little bit. Chandler gets it from Cody, gives it to Chin. Cody gets it back. 
Good effort on the rebound by Sierra Parsons, but she ended up with a foot out of bounds before she could control that ball. It'll be West ball in for the Blue Knights. Number one, Carly O'Neill, a five foot sophomore with the ball here. And who else came on? Number 11, Omeima Sirhan, 5'10 senior. This is Tang, a little running right-hander in the lane, won't go, but I think it came off the top of the head of Olivia Scribner, number four of Kennett. West will inbound. Culver. Sw swung around nicely. Foul line jumper. Won't drop. Chin swings it back out. Gets it back. Does Chin. Jumper is long. Habert got to it first. I think she may have knocked it off of uh, Teng's foot. It'll be Kenneth Ball. Here comes Naya Piok. There's two Pioks on the team here tonight. Naya and Nayana. Naya wears number three. Nayana wears 12. Habert. Rebound falls for Carly O'Neill. She's looking down to Poulin. She drops it in. West leaves seven to four. In the corner to Chin. She's got a three attempt. Again, it's long. Yeah, I think that uh, Abuk is going to pick up her first foul on that little bump. Habert looking around, having a hard time finding a teammate, and it's knocked away by O'Neill. He'll stay Eagle basketball with 1.14 left in the first quarter. West up four. Looking to knock off a team that's six and two in girls division two. And corner jumper for Cody. That won't go. Chin chases down the rebound. Now Scribner of Kennett, and she will get it. 7-6. Poulin gives it to Sirhan. Now into Tang. Little bump, little room, little left-handed layup. It's 9-6. Here's Liz Cody to Chin. She didn't have enough room. Makes a diagonal. Habert gets the rebound. It's back out to Scribner. Scribner loses control. That'll be a turnover. Here comes Culver back on for West. And Culver will pull the trigger. My goodness, she had company over there. But she didn't have, have much time. There's a buzzer ending the first quarter. West with a 9-6 to six lead. Over the Eagles of Kennett. Neither team shot well, and that's uh, very much an understatement. We have not had a free throw. So I think we have two three-point baskets for Kennett. And a couple, maybe we'd have just three uh, threes for West. Neither team coming close to shooting 50% here today so far. Uh, one foul in the entire quarter. And both coaches are going to talk about ways to attack the defenses. I think that uh, Coach Jerry Haynes from West is probably pretty happy with the with the looks he's getting. He's getting pretty good jumpers uh, against the the man to man that Kennett is putting up. It's Kennett that maybe wants to figure out a way to get the ball down low. 
Uh, Jalen Cummings, a 5'9 junior, had possession or a position down low a couple of times for the Eagles, but they were unable to, to find a way to get her the ball. And getting getting the ball down low to a post player is getting to be a lost art. We got a little bump on that drive. Cummings is going to get called for it. I think uh, Scribner made the most of it, but she did lower her shoulder a little bit, did Olivia. And the referees gave the gave the call. That's the second foul on West. First on Olivia. There's a post play there. That's now a little inside out. Might get better looks for the Eagles. Well, she had her again that time. Should have gone back down. And she'll force up the jumper, and it comes straight out to Carly. O'Neill is fouled. Scribner came from behind that time, kind of sneaking up on Carly. She did not know she was there, but she hit her across the arm. And we have the first foul on Kennett. Here's Culver. She gets tied up. Yeah, that was definitely a hell ball. Possession should, uh, no, possession to Kennett. A minute into the second quarter. West looking for their third win in this young season. They're doing a nice job defending in this zone. Good hand that time by O'Neill as uh, Sierra Parsons was dribbling across the lane. She reached in. Oh, high low. Maybe that's a better job of getting it down low. Oof. Once again, this time Scribner lost control of the ball and kind of fell over and in the process of uh, just holding herself up. She gets called for the foul. So that's the second foul on Kennett. It's the second on Olivia. And Scribner will sit down. Who came in? Might have been Chin returned to the game. O'Neill to Naya. Naya doesn't handle that cleanly. But West will maintain possession. Culver to inbound. O'Neill to Viziris. Back to Culver. The corner to Naya. O'Neill. Viziris. Culver. Man-to-man -man. sometimes plays like a zone, but there's not a whole lot of movement on the west side. That wasn't a bad idea by O'Neill, but it wasn't well executed. Her pass goes up over Naya's hand. Actually, it was to Nayana. So both Piocs on the floor, Naya and Nayana. A jumper from Cody, she's got it. Just like that, we're tied. Timeout, West. Michaela Viziris was having a hard time getting over midcourt, and I think Coach Haynes was worried that the 10-second violation was about to happen. So he called timeout, and talked that over, saved the possession, and talked it over with his team. We're at the Quinn Gymnasium at West High School. A Division II girls game, West and Kennett. And at the 5.35 mark of the second quarter, we are tied at nine. It'll be West to inbound on the far side. 
Culver gets it back. Goes to Niana. With Aziris. That's deflected, but Culver tracks it down. This is Tang. This is Naya. Tang. Culver. Viziris with the rebound. The putback won't drop. And away comes Cody. Kennett with a chance to take the first lead of the game. Running right hander is blocked by Nyana. And then a travel call. Good defensive work by the West team that time. With Michaela. Picked up her dribble in a dangerous location, but she manages to split the defense, makes the bounce pass into uh, Nyana, who then was fouled. Third team foul on Kennett, first on Jalen Cummings. This is Abu Tang. She's got it. No, he's going to wave it off. Offensive foul. That is Abuk's second foul, third on the team. We'll see what Coach Haynes has to do about that. Tang may be his best scorer. Tang's brother is a uh, freshman sensation on the boys' team. Chandler, ooh, slipped by Chin, and it's going to be a travel. Chin's plant foot just kind of went out from underneath her, and down she went. That clearly is a travel. Kennett's showing some two-thirds court pressure. West does a good job to break it. Naya ends up with the uh, short jumper. She converts. It's 11 to 9. West. Chandler in the lane. Her soft jumper won't drop. Good rebound by Naya, and she gets it out to O'Neill. Excuse me, that's Viziris. And she gets called for the offensive foul. Coach Haynes may want to teach them to pull up and take a little 10 foot jumper. Two successive offensive fouls. I really don't argue with either one. Not that it would matter. Right, Parsons cross court to Chandler. Chandler slips down. What's going on out there? Parsons will step off, and number 25, Mariah Parker, a 5'7 junior, will come on for Kennett. Looks like Samantha Habert is on as well, number 11 for Kennett. This is Viziris. This is Culver. This is Tang. And that time, file is a block on Chandler. See, that's only one on Chandler. Ella is Tang on the post. Turns into pressure. She's got to get out of there. She's going to get a three second call, but instead, the travel is the call. And here's Chandler. She goes right to Cheng. Or Chin, I should say. Good rebound by uh, Sydney. Chandler, got Sydney in the corner. Actually, she's got two teammates in the corner, and it comes off both of them, but is actually touched last by Nyana. Got about three minutes until halftime. A low-scoring affair here at the Quinn Gymnasium. But West leads by two, 11 to nine. Cody. Chin just manages to keep control of it. Cody will stop and pop. 
Jump ball. Tang and Habert. That will favor West. All right, Ania Poulin back on for West, number 10. Here's Poulin. This is Viziris. This is Culver. Back to Poulin. Now Tang up top. Viziris, Culver. Viziris uses the pick from Nyana, but kicks it out to Culver. The running right-hander comes off. Nyana with two attempts. That comes into the hands of uh, Mariah Parker, I think. Her outlet pass goes astray. It'll be West Ball. Two minutes until halftime. Poulin to Viziris. Viziris one-on-one -on -one with Chin, but picks up her dribble. Now to Tang. Poulin with the three. Rebound to Chandler. She'll bring it up herself. Looking around, she wanted to go left, finally does. Here's Cody, got it. And Kennett leads 12 to 11. I do believe that's their only lead of the game. West has only scored two points with a minute 15 left until halftime. That is in the second quarter. Six for Kennett. Down low, Chandler. It's gonna get fouled. Nyana's gonna get the call. Almost looks like she might have taken an extra step in there. But it's Parker, isn't it? Mariah, the 5'7 junior, makes the first one. Gives her team a 13 to 11 lead with a minute left. That's over the back. It'll be Kenneth Ball in the corner. Habert over to Cody. Cody appears to be the best shooter on the Eagles team. Habert's pass is knocked away. Here comes West. Tang to Poulin. Back to Tang. Viziris. Culver will pull the trigger. Banks it in. Gives her team a 14 to 13 lead with 25 seconds until halftime. Chandler. Kenneth showing some patience here. Well, as I say that, Cody turns around and drops in a three with Five seconds left till halftime. West needs to go. That will count. Yeah. That almost went too. But going into halftime, Kennett drops in a three in the last 10 seconds, and they lead 16 to 14 at halftime. We'll be right back. And the teams are back. We're about ready to start the second half, as promised. Uh, I want to inform folks that, that uh, both teams took quite a long time in the locker room, but Kennett just came out about 30 seconds ago. Uh, Coach uh, Larry Meter must have had a lot to talk about, and his team gets a good look at three right off the bat. Look at Culver do a good job to protect that ball. Olivia. Got that rebound, was surrounded by three opponents. And she had two hands firmly on that ball and would not let him take it away. Used her shoulders to clear a little bit of space, which is a very nice look down low. And managed to find a teammate to get that ball away for West. 
Kennett does open the account, though, here in the second half with a nice long look down low. I have to wonder if uh, Larry Meter, Coach Meter, was talking about uh, play down in the, in the pivot, down, looking down low under the basket. Kennett has, uh, I'm tempted to say, settled for threes. Wes wants it. That's, there's the good offense for Wes right there. It's Culver taking a jumper. But I'm not sure Kennett wants to play that way. And he's got big number two, Jalen Cummings, down on the block. You can see there they're starting to look for. That time the cut was to Parsons. And another two for Kennett pushes quickly this lead up to six. Where Kennett led by two at halftime. Is Tang. I think West needs the ball in her hands a little bit more. There she is, Abuk. Culver might bank that one in. Nope. There may be opportunities for West to get the ball down low, especially with Culver, because I think everybody in the whole gym expects her to take a three when she's got just a little bit of room. And if she's the one that can kind of fool everyone and, and flip that ball down low, there may be good opportunities for the Knights. That's a nice step by Nyana. She knocks it away. It's Culver. Got Tang. Goes in the corner to Poulin. Not a Culver. Along the baseline. Puts it up high. Almost works as a pass to Nyana. She makes a nice little bounce pass to Culver. Now Viziris. That won't drop. West just can't seem to drop it in that basket. I think we are going to get the travel call. I'm not sure that uh, Sierra did, but she was. seems like she was about to at any moment. Judged to have indeed at least dragged that pivot foot. She literally pivoted it on it. However... Poulin is to Culver. Culver a little give and go. Nyana had a very nice look that time. Needed to convert that. And now down low is Cummings and she's fouled. Kenneth doing a nice job of looking down low. And they've gotten the ball in there three times. They've got two baskets and now two free throws as a result. Jalen did not score in the first half. Scribner of Kennett had a three. Mariah Parker scored a free throw. And Liz Cody, number 30, had four threes for 12 points. Cummings front rims both of those. There's Poulin, looking down low, comes back up top. Not a lot of dribbling, which is okay for West. Tang wants to pull the trigger. Cummings, uh, that's not Cummings, that's Chandler won't let her. Chandler doing a good job on Tang right now. Abuk needs to get the ball down low. Here she's gonna come up top to get it, but she's so far from the basket. Zeris actually had a jumper that time, didn't realize it, kicked it off. West being patient offensively as we get to the four minute mark here in the third quarter. Poulin wants it, gets it. Tang, now she's gonna put it on the floor and go to the basket and get a bump from Chandler. First foul on Kennett in the second half. Probably just the first on her. For some reason, that's not coming up on the board. Here comes uh, Omema Sirhan, number 11 on for West. What's the second foul on Chandler? Tang takes one dribble, kicks it out. Zeris. 
It's a long three from Chandler. Just kind of lost patience that time and settled for that. Oh, that's a bump from Ania Poulin. She'll pick up the foul. They've got a timeout west. As uh, Coach Haynes' team has yet to find the bottom of the net here in the third quarter with 3.24 left. And Kennett leads 20 to 14. They scored uh, four quick points. And it's been dry since then. On the west side, both Olivia Culver and Abuk Tang scored five points in the first half. Naya Piak and Anaya Poulin each scored two. All right, Kenneth to inbound. Sydney Chin. This is Liz Cody. Leading scorer in this one. This is Habert. Habert goes back to Chin. In the corner, the three won't drop. Habert has a good feel for rebounds, but it's taken away by Viziris. Her shot is blocked. And Chin comes the other way. This is Cody. Snaps the ball down low. Tang is alert to it. Makes a great steal. Gets bumped as she goes behind the back. And Scrib Scribner just slammed the ball down. There's no question that was a foul. And there's no question that throwing the ball down as she did is a technical. And that is the call. You can see the referee. He's explaining how this works. Scribner will go up on the board. That is her third and her fourth foul, if I'm not mistaken. Two team fouls go up. Abuk Tang misses the first free throw on the technical. There'll be two shots, and West will maintain possession. And West just cannot afford to leave points at the free throw line. Down six here. They have yet to score in the third quarter. Did Coach Meter take Scribner off the floor? Yes, he did. That was obvious. the obvious move. Let her cool down a little bit. When you show up a referee by... Like, Slamming the ball, that's one of the classic ways to pick up a technical foul. Rare to see in a girls game. That was a double dribble as it came away from Chandler and she had to put two hands on it to regain possession. She dribbled it again after that as she was motoring on down the floor. Turnover will get the ball to West. Poulin's pass will end up as a turnover. No Kennett player touched that. The ball can't go back into the, the uh, backcourt after being in possession on the forecourt. And we get a timeout. I'm not sure which coach called that. Doesn't really matter. The 208 mark of the third quarter. Kennett having put four points on the board here in the first six minutes of the second half, lead 20 to 14. I happen to have a pen with me, ladies and gentlemen, that is dying. And it hardly matters. I, I don't have a lot of points to keep track of in this one. Let's see, Kenneth got here uh, to their 6-2 record. They've, they've lost to Spalding, 
They beat Kingswood 49-11. They lost to Cobrown Northwood 44-37. Beat Pembroke 40-37. Beat Oyster River 53-25. Beat Laconia 30-27. Plymouth 34-29. And Bishop Brady 58-55. All right, Kenneth will inbound. This is Sierra Parsons. And the rebound gets off the court, off of Kenneth. All right, Ania, bring it up. Cern. Culver. Sir, Culver will take the three from straight away. Won't drop. She can hoist him up there. In the corner is Chandler. The rebound to Poulin. Book Tang needs to, oh, she had the lane. She could have dribbled right in. The return pass is deflected and then deflected off of Abuk's hand. And it will be Kenneth Ball. Abuk didn't realize it, didn't put her eyes to the rim at all. And she had a half a step on her defender and there was nobody between her and the rim. Instead, she went for the uh, give and go. Hebert snaps it over to Chin. This is Cody. Now to Parsons. Save that time by Sirhan. Maybe shouldn't have, but it's all right. Offensive efficiency in this game has got to be around 15% or even lower for these teams. The jumper from Habert won't drop. The follow-up is Chin. She's fouled. She'll get two. Let's see who the foul's on. It's on Naya. Naya Piok. A 5'9 junior wearing number three. Eighteen point six seconds left here in the third quarter. Kennett leading 21-14. Tang comes away with the rebound. Kicks it over to O'Neill. Not a pooling. That's on the floor. Parker. And O'Neill. I think it was a uh, hell ball. It'll go to West with just three seconds left in the quarter. Sirhan needs to shoot it. There's the horn. And West suffers the indignity of being shut out in the third quarter. Kennett, though, only put five on the board, and they have a 21-14 lead as we head into the fourth quarter. West at two and four. Caught here by uh, beating Kingswood 37-29, losing to Stark 61-22 to Hollis Brookline, 55-22, beating Sauhegan, 31-17, and losing to Lebanon, 70-41, and to Pelham, 42-27. But as I said earlier today, they 
have a much easier schedule in the next couple of weeks. Playing uh, next week, playing two teams without a win between them just yet. I don't recall exactly who it is. It'll be Kennett Ball to start the fourth quarter. Looks like it's uh, O'Neill, Poulin, Sirhan, Naya, and Abuk on for West. She game's leading scorer kicks it back out. Up on top for Samantha Habert. Habert gives it to Cody. Now Habert again, now Cody. Now Habert. Chin. Gets it. Running right hander. Makes it a nine point Kennett lead. O'Neill to Sirhan. Now, well, she looked like she was going to head to the basket. She probably should have. She had a little bit of room there. Could have got herself in a good position to use the backboard and bank it in. Now, there the two players can't decide who's going to pick it up. And Cody decides she will. She misses the easiest shot she's had all day, but she'll get two. Carly O'Neill will pick up the foul, the five foot sophomore. As the, uh, really as the guard in, in that situation with the loose ball at the other end, it was her ball to pick up. Taking care of the basketball is what guards are supposed to do. Of course, everybody's supposed to do it, but they're the ones. Culver, over to O'Neill. Poulin, now to Abu. These West girls need to uh, get to the basket. They need to dribble their way in, I think. They, they need to take on the defender. Tang, they make a step or two towards that, and then they stop. Now we're going to get a little hop on Carly O'Neill, but that's all right. That, that's what they need to do. O'Neill just needed to kind of wrap that ball around. She was making the right pass to her teammate down low. I think it was a boot. But she made a little hop in the process of it, but that's a that's a good turnover, in my opinion. They need to put the ball on the floor and get into the basket. They're going to pick up some fouls. They're going to get to the line, maybe make some close-in shots. Chin loses possession on that one, gets it back, gets it to Habert. And O'Neill is going to get called for putting hands on her opponent. O'Neill's first. Doesn't seem right. We get a timeout. <laughs> Kennett leads this one 24 to 14. It was 9 to 6 West after. The first quarter, at halftime, it was 16-14 Kennett. It was 21-14 after three. And now it stands at 24-14. West has got to find a way to the basket and put some points on the board. And it needs to start happening as we are just six minutes left in this one. All right, it'll be Kenneth Ball. Right, 
Habert gets it from Cody. Cody dribbling that kind of high. O'Neal's able to stay with her. West now in his, you know, still in that zone. Chin down low to Parsons, kicks it back out to Chin. Now to Habert. Let's get Cody left, goes there. Cody deep, thought about it. Kicks it back to Habert, now to Chin. Now to Habert. Can it, can be patient. They're, they don't need to hurry. They have a 10 point lead. Parsons to the basket, she's fouled. Who's the foul on? It is on Naya. Naya's second. Twenty-five fourteen lead for the Eagles of Kennett High School of Conway, if I'm not mistaken. O'Neill. Tang. Looks like they're looking for some cutters. There's some room for Poulin. Baseline's cut off, but now if they can swing it around, they ought to find someone open. Doesn't happen quite quick enough. Kenneth defensively responds. O'Neill Tang needs to put that on the floor and get to the rim. There we go. All right, look at that, it worked out. So she put up kind of a wild shot, but Anaya was there to rebound and drop it in, and Wes is finally on the boards here in the second half. 10 point Kennett lead, Chin to Parsons. Oh my, looked pretty clean from this side. Is it on Naya or, it is, huh. Looks like Naya maybe got her hand in there. Pretty cleanly, but referee doesn't see it that way, and it's a third foul on Naya Piok. Two shots for Parsons. It's starting to look like Kennett can put this game away at the free throw line. If they haven't already, they have an 11 point lead with 420. West scored nine points in the first quarter, five in the second and have just two points in the second half. There's a quick shot by Poulin. Don't blame her for taking it, but again, I'd love to see them get to the basket, get to the rim. Now there's Parsons making a living, sliding across the lane for the Eagles now. They're doing a pretty good job of picking her up, seeing her, I should say, and getting her the ball. Tang. Over to Poulin. Back to Tang. Vizieris banks. Oh, I thought it was going in. Banked out. Three and a half left. Long pass in the corner. Now it's Chin. Chandler, oh no, it's Parsons, of course. So over and over again, Coach Meter's got, uh, maybe that's what he was uh, discussing in the locker room for so long at halftime. Sierra Parsons has just been sliding down from uh, about the foul line, sliding across the lane, and her teammates have picked her out. Parsons did not score in the first half. She probably has 10 as we sit here at the 3.15 mark of the fourth quarter. And that almost certainly will allow Kennett to chuck this one up as a win. They would move to seven and two if that happens.
Do a little spying on Coach Haynes. We need to mic him so we know what he's saying along with the sketches. Reminiscent of uh, my good friend Don Pernard's uh, chalk talk here as we were announcing games, especially here at West. Coach Pernard would bring his whiteboard and describe a thing or two. John Habib was a huge fan of chalk talk. All right, here we go. Three minutes left in this one. West with 16 points on the board and down 14. Take a huge turnaround, but it's 14 points isn't that many either. Tang's jumper comes off the front. It looks as though Kenneth's gonna look to hold the ball. West is gonna have to go to a man-to-man. -man. They haven't. They haven't yet. They're just trying pressure. Kenneth's not gonna shoot unless they get the layup, and that would probably be in Sierra Parsons sliding across the lane. Look for the foul. They've got it. Took a minute off the clock. 2.16 left. Oh, we get eight fouls. We'll shoot one on one. Jalen missed both of her free throw attempts in the first half. This is one and one, so it's a live ball. That one rolls out. Good rebound by Nayana. She gives it to Poulin. Tang, there she goes in the lane. The running right hander won't drop. It's a better look, though. Got a late foul that time. Mabuk Tang, judged to have uh, accidentally hit the side of uh, the head of Sierra Parsons. Certainly no malice. It wasn't even all that violent. But referees do protect players. They get hit in the head. Typically, the whistle is going to blow. That's three on a book. It comes Naya. Somebody else came in as well. Looks like number two, Gloria Dennis, a 5'4 senior. I don't know what we're doing. We're trying to decide who's going to shoot, I think. Parsons is the one on the line. I guess we're going to have her shoot. Should be one and one. She's got it. Gives her team a 31-16 lead here. Just under two minutes left. Kicked out to Poulin. Just can't find the range today. Cummings. We got a timeout. Interesting. Timeout Kennett. I think he's trying to, coach is trying to get Emily Kenny, number 13, into the game. That's probably the reason for the timeout. Kenny is a 5'5 sophomore. Obviously, Coach Meter is comfortable with a 16-point lead here with a minute and a half to go. It's always a great time to get some experience for his younger players, for Coach's younger players. And indeed, Emily is on. She's listed at 5'5". Five five. She looks like she's a lot taller than that. West in a man-to-man. -man. Chin kicks it to Chandler. 
Chandler with Poulin on her, not afraid to body up a little bit. I like that. Nice defense. Poulin's gonna come away with the ball eventually, yes. Anaya gets it to Culver. In the corner to uh, Dennis. It's Poulin. Now Dennis, top of the key. She'll go to the basket, but she'll have her pocket picked by Kenny, just on for Kenneth. Kenneth Kenny will go to the line. I think she'll shoot two this time. Emily will bank it in. We are inside the last minute of this one, ladies and gentlemen. It's always great to be in the Quinn Gymnasium on the campus of West High School. This time the foul will be on Kenny. Culver's got the room down the left side, lays it in. Along the baseline goes Cummings. Somehow she comes away with the rebound. Culver now with that rebound, she'll go up the left hand side. Wants the baseline again. She kind of liked that last time. The putback is by Naya Piok. West scores a quick four points. And it will end 33-20. Kennett moving to Agati's seven and two record. West will slip to two and five. But uh, they have a pretty good opportunity over the next few weeks to uh, even that record. Worth keeping an eye on the Blue Knights as they learn to get to the basket a little bit better. And they can look forward to better shooting nights without a question. I'm Peter Capano. Hope you enjoyed this one, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next time on Manchester Public Television Services Game of the Week.